Which of the following has a non-odontogenic origin? Radicular cyst, OKC which stands for odontogenic keratocyst, dentigerous cyst and sebaceous cyst. All the four given options are nothing but the cystic lesions. Now we will be discussing about the cyst of oral cavity. What do you mean by cyst? It is nothing but a pathologic cavity filled with fluid lined by an epithelium surrounded by a definite connective tissue capsule. And the cyst of oral cavity are of two categories, odontogenic cyst and non-odontogenic cyst. Odontogenic cyst develops from the epithelium of the development apparatus of the tooth and tooth related structures. Whereas the non-odontogenic cyst includes all the remaining cyst other than the odontogenic cyst. Some of the examples include the nasopalatine duct cyst, nasolabial cyst, median palatal cyst, globulomaxillary cyst etc. So these are some of the examples of non-odontogenic cyst. And now we are going to discuss about the odontogenic cyst specifically regarding the classification. So once we are familiar about the different odontogenic cysts, then it will be easy for us to rule out the non-odontogenic cyst from the given options based on the exclusion method. So first, the odontogenic cysts which are derived from the rests of malices, which are nothing but the remnants of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath present in the periodontal ligament space. So it includes two cyst that is radicular cyst and residual cyst radicular and residual cyst and the second category is the one which is derived from reduced enamel epithelium reduced enamel epithelium so once the tooth formation is complete the ameloblast degenerate forming a thin layer that is the reduced enamel epithelium so two cyst can develop that is dentigerous cyst and eruption cyst. And the third important category includes the odontogenic cyst which are derived from the rests of dental lamina. It includes five odontogenic cysts such as odontogenic keratocyst, lateral periodontal cyst, glandular odontogenic cyst, glandular odontogenic cyst and two gingival cysts will be involved. The two gingival cysts are nothing but the gingival cyst of newborn and adults. Gingival cyst of newborn and gingival cyst of adults. And next comes two other cysts known as calcifying odontogenic cyst and paradental cyst which are considered as unclassified cysts because of their non-specific origin. So this classification is based on the origin. Whether the cyst originates from the rest of malasis or reduced enamel epithelium or rest of dental lamina. Okay, So three important sources are given here as the point of origin of odontogenic cyst. And now let's quickly look into some of the pictures. So here the first picture shows the dentigerous cyst. So we should observe for some of the important characteristic features such as the pericoronal location. Okay, First and foremost is an unerupted tooth because within the bone level the unerupted tooth develops the cyst. Okay, So here we can observe an unerupted second molar and pericoronal location of the cyst and the point of attachment should be at the level of cemento enamel junction. And next the second picture it shows the eruption cyst. That is the development of cyst of an unerupted tooth within the soft tissue level. So here in this picture you can appreciate the cystic lesion that is evident in the region of unerupted central incisor having a bluish tinge on the surface and here we should observe that it is within the soft tissue level whereas with respect to dentigerous cyst it is within the bone. And next Odontogenic cyst is odontogenic keratocyst. The most important feature is that it shows greater anteroposterior expansion and lesser buccolingual expansion. So here you can observe a well-defined corticated radiolucent lesion involving the entire body of mandible to the entire ramus. Okay, and you can observe it is multilocular. You can find some septas in the 
radiolucent lesion giving a multilocular appearance. And moving on to the second picture, it shows the lateral periodontal cyst. So here you can observe for the typical location of the cyst on the lateral aspect of the tooth, a well-defined corticated radiolucency on the lateral aspect of the premolar. Most important point is that the lateral periodontal cyst has predilection to develop in canine premolar region. That's the next important point. And now moving on to the next odontogenic cyst which is glandular odontogenic cyst. So here you can appreciate multilocular radiolucent lesion and the most important point is the location. So it, the glandular odontogenic cyst has predilection in the anterior mandible. So that is well demonstrated in the OPG given here. And the second picture shows calcifying odontogenic cyst. It can be appreciated mainly by mixed radiolucent radio-opaque lesion and unerupted tooth. So here a closer view is shown. You can see an unerupted tooth and then we can observe the mixed radiolucent radio-opaque lesion. So these are the radio-opaque specks seen within the lesion in association with an unerupted tooth but the original outline is here. Okay. So this is the original outline. So it is mixed radiolucent radio-opaque lesion. And next comes the gingival cyst of newborn shown in the first picture. So here you can see the gingival cyst in newborns and the second one shows the gingival cyst of adults. So again we should know that the gingival cyst of adults has predilection for the canine premolar region similar to that of lateral periodontal cyst and this gingival cyst of the adults it is not going to bring about any of the radiographic changes therefore it is considered as a soft tissue counterpart of lateral periodontal cyst soft tissue counterpart of lateral periodontal tissue and now we are familiar about the different odontogenic cyst along with the classification and now getting back to the question the first option says radicular cyst which is derived from rest of malasis and it is odontogenic in origin and second option OKC derived from the rest of dental lamina and again it is odontogenic and dentigerous cyst from reduced enamel epithelium therefore the first three options given here are odontogenic in nature Whereas looking into option 4 which says sebaceous cyst. So sebaceous cyst is non-odontogenic in nature. It is not related to tooth and tooth related structure. So sebaceous cyst is also known as epidermoid cyst with frequent location on face, scrotum, scalp etc. It is absent on palms and soles. It is an important point because sebaceous glands are not present on palms and soles. It can occur within the oral and ocular lesions. So within the oral cavity, it can occur on the lips. It can occur on the floor of mouth, etc. So this sebaceous cyst occurs or it develops due to blockage of the sebaceous gland ducts leading to accumulation of sebaceous gland secretions. The most important feature is the presence of punctum in the lesion. So here you can appreciate it is nothing but a black depressed dot within the lesion. Okay, So this is the punctum. So this acts as a pathway through which the sebaceous secretions are poured out. Okay, And the second picture you can see it is showing an ulcerative fungating mass which is nothing but cox peculiar tumor which is one of the complication of the untreated sebaceous cyst okay cox peculiar tumor the sebaceous cyst is said to originate from the blockage of the sebaceous glands and it is situated within the dermis that's the most important point it is situated within the dermis and it can also occur due to implantation of the epidermal cells during the embryonal period some literature states that as an origin so if that is the case then it occurs due to proliferation of the trapped epidermal cells within the space of dermis layer okay so this is about the sebaceous cyst and now getting back to the question out of the four given options radicular cyst okc and dentigerous cyst are odontogenic in origin and the only non odontogenic cyst given here is option 4 sebaceous cyst and therefore it is the right answer here